I feel that this is a beginning of a new era. Okay, tell your neighbor this is a beginning of a new thing. God is telling in Isaiah 43 verse 19. This is a word for each and every one of you. If you are waiting upon the Lord, you are waiting for something God to do. I feel that this is the word of God from every one of you. Isaiah chapter 43. It's a very strategic verse. Isaiah 43 verse 19. He says, um, verse 19, Behold, I will do a new thing. It shall, now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. See, God is going to do a new thing. Every one of you who was waiting upon the Lord, this is the answer. This is the answer for you. He is going to make a road in the wilderness. Means a wilderness, you can never make a road because of the sand dunes. You make a road, go home and come back tomorrow morning, there is no road because sand dunes have filled it up. So impossible. There is a, all your effort will just go waste overnight. So if you are in a place in your business or your job, your studies, anywhere, where you feel that you are not able to have a concrete road in front of you, you don't have any road, I tell you, this is a time where God will make a road. Tell your neighbor, God will make a road. Yes, and he will say, walk in it, that's it. You, you, you may have said, oh, I cannot make a road. Let me tell you one more thing. God is also saying one more thing, that is... I will even make road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, desert, you cannot get even a cup of water. You have to travel for miles to drink water in an oasis which comes once in a while. But God is saying, I will make rivers in desert. That means God is going to bring a revival in your life. If you are dry, you feel that I am dry. Oh, I am I'm just in a... In a in a, in, a, in a wagon which is going very slow, I'm not able to feel a revival. I'm not able to, you know, really grow in God. I'm not able to, there is a lot of restrictions. I'm not able to grow in God because of my family situation or my work situation. Or I am not a right type of a person. I tell you, there is a good news for you. God is going to give you rivers in the desert. That means, you know, rivers is multiplication. Impossible. When you don't get a cup of water, how can you get a river? God is going to do that. These are the two things God wants to tell each and every one of you. This is a new season. Uh, God is going to do these two things upon each and every one. Okay, tell your neighbor, you will have a road in the wilderness. Hallelujah. You will have a river in the desert. You will have a river in your desert. When God is going to do new things in your life, you need to provoke the new beginnings in your life. I'll tell you something. Huh? You need to cooperate with God. You need to do something which will provoke that new beginning to begin in your life. Many times, you know, your new season comes and goes and just don't, it doesn't touch us. It doesn't touch us. There is revival all over, but I am cold. Everybody is shouting, but I am quiet. I don't know. Let me tell you one thing. There is certain things which you have to do to provoke that new beginning in your life. Today, I, my, my message is how to provoke God's new beginning into our lives. Tell your neighbor, today something new is going to happen in your life. All the new beginnings starts with the new birth. That is only two Two things which God created when it comes to human being in the, in the Bible. Okay. First is God created Adam. He is a new creation. There was, no, there was no man before Adam. New creation. The second person God created is you. Tell your neighbor, you are the second Adam. Yes. He created newly. You are newly. Created. Okay, let's read Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new create. Who is a new creation? Adam. Then next to Adam is who? It's you. 
Because you are in Christ. See, I'll tell you something. God never works in things which is not His. The entire Bible, all the promises are yes and amen, only to the righteous, not for everyone. Bible is not, the, the words of God is not for all, it's for the righteous. Tell your neighbor, I am righteous. I walk in these promises. I am a new creation. Hallelujah. All provisions of the scriptures is for the righteous. Not for the unrighteous. It's for the righteous. You are a new creation. God will make things new in you. If he can make you into a new creation, he can make anything inside of you. Only you need to tune with him. You need to work with him. Okay? Let us read some more things about this new creation. You know? First of all, you should know what you should be doing. Let's turn to uh, um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. Ephesians 4, verse 17 onwards. Let us read some things about this new creation. What is this new creation? Many of us, we don't know what is new creation. We actually don't understand the new creation. We don't know the value of new creation. Okay, so we live like old creation. We think that, oh, I go to church every Sunday morning. I go to house of prayer every Sunday morning. A pastor says, please come, please come. Hey, come on, what have you done? You should know who you are and where you have come. You should know what it is. What is new creation? What is accepting Jesus Christ? When you say, Jesus, come into my heart, something forms in you. You should know this. What is formed in you? Now, Shama Ma'am said, when Bittu accepted Christ, he said, Oh, what happened in him? It's not a good feeling. It is not a good vibration. This is how people of the world may interpret a spiritual thing which happened. It's not a good vibration. It is not a good thing which happened. It is not something that goes out. No, we should know what happened. We have been a new creation. Something is created in us. Something is connected in us. Uh, verse 17, I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. You should know that we are futile in our mind. If you, have, you and I, we are using our mind so much, we should be understanding that it is a futility of the Bible. Bible says it's a futility of the mind. Huh? Verse 18, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart. See, I'll tell you something. When a man doesn't know who, the love of Jesus Christ, it's very hard to crack him, to talk to him anything. You just talk about him, about giving, he will not accept. You talk about, about tithes, he won't accept. He talks about holiness, he won't accept. He won't accept anything. First of all, we should know. We can know. If somebody says, you should be holy... You will say, yes, we should be holy. We should give. We should give. You can easily be sensitive to what God is saying. An unbeliever or a guy who is not a new creation cannot understand these things. He will say, why should I do that? When I don't have money, why should I do it? <laughs> he is saying, verse 19, who being past, past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness, to work of uncleanness, with greediness, but you are not so learned Christ. It's very easy to be lewd. It is very easy to be unclean. Verse 21. If indeed you have heard him um, and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That you put off concerning your former conduct. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. See there is an old man who is also growing. Don't give him food. You grow the new man. Verse 23. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That you put on the new man which was created according to God. In the order of God. You are. Who is God in this world? It is you. You are created in the order of God. In the order of God. That's why you know. You don't say nothing. This is impossible. That is, I tell you. With the spirit everything is possible. In the natural dimension everything is not possible. Can I jump there? No it is not possible. That's why, you know, people jump here and there only on the screen. In the day-to-day -day life, when they jump like that, they may injure themselves. But in spirit, there is no difference. There is no distance. You can go anywhere. 
you can walk anywhere they come like wind they can go your spirit is like a wind it says you know you put on the new man which was created in the order of god himself in true righteousness and true holiness people will have uh, we will have true righteousness and true holiness this is our new birth this is new birth and this new birth is not uh, let us read one more verse galatians chapter 6 Galatians chapter 6 verse 15 let us read this for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation so what is a new creation a new creation doesn't come to us based on circumcision and uncircumcision it is created in our heart that's what the Bible says when new thing new thing has to begin in our life we cannot do the same old thing and expect some new things to happen. It won't happen. You have to change certain things. Certain dynamics which happens in your life. So that you actually provoke it to come into your life. Why should I allow it to pass through me. Without touching me. I will not allow it. If, if some blessing is coming. Upon the kingdom of God. Upon the house of prayer. I have to walk in it. So you have to tune yourself. So that you just catch hold of these things when you used to be when you, we used to be young there was an antenna which we used to have it's called yagi antenna yagi antenna looks like a comb you know have you seen that antennas yes you have to that antenna should exactly point the radio station or a tv station for example in madurai the TV station was in Kodaikanal. So it was in one direction. So all the Yagi antennas of Madurai, our city, will point towards Kodaikanal. Why? Because if it points anywhere, we only get dot dots, you know. We won't get any picture. But the moment we turn the Yagi antenna, nowadays... Uh, I don't think we use Yagi antennas, we use dish antennas that work in a different principle. So Yagi antenna, it has to always that rod, now the center rod should point towards the TV station. So in those days, TV station used to be on top of the mountains so that it can cater to all the surrounding areas. Nowadays, we don't have any of such things. All things are different because they shoot to the satellite the highest point from there it caters to half the earth. I'll tell you something. Today in our spiritual life, we need to turn your antennas to, the, to God correctly. We need to fine tune ourselves to catch more of Him. One day I was, when I was a young boy, I always thought, why should I praise God? Will God get more happy when I praise him. You know some people when you praise them. They will give you a lot of gifts. You should say. Hey, admi acha hai. Kitna tumko? <laughs> he will give you everything. So I had a, some feeling like that. Why God is like that? Wo bhi aisa hai. One day God said no. I am already happy with you. But your antenna is. Looking somewhere here and there. <laughs> Turn your antenna. Now how to turn my antenna? Praise Him. Worship Him. Read His word. Do His work. That's how you turn your antenna towards God. So that you can have the maximum blessing of God upon you. Hallelujah. God is very good. God has already blessed us. So it is important. We get out of these rituals. That's why you know. Christianity as a religion is like any other religion. It's no use. It's full of rituals. What to do, what not to do. How to eat, how not to eat. When to fast, when not to fast. 40 days, we should fast. What to eat? Can we eat this? Can we eat that? I'll tell you one thing. God is very clear. He says in his word, hmm, in Galatians chapter 6 verse 15, there is no circumcision nor uncircumcision 
today you don't know how to talk certain things don't worry ha huh? you don't worry about anything new creation is everything new creation surpasses your outside and and descends on your inside outside can be anything it descends on your inside god doesn't you know discriminate between anyone for god everybody is so important you may be the smallest person in this place you may be the most insignificant or a newcomer but god surpasses everything and he will come and begin a new creation in you give in the new beginning in you begin the new beginning he will do it that's why you know it says you know you be huh? so new creation where is the newness coming inside us okay let's turn to one more verse colossians chapter 3 verse 10 when we were young there was an auntie there was a old lady who who used to stay near our house early morning she will take bath and she will not allow anyone to touch her because uh she will always say if you you are all not taken bath if you touch me i will become impure so i cannot go and worship god she used to say like that okay many of us we think outward cleanliness outward appearance as important in the sight of god it is not important it's not important how let us read colossians chapter 3 verse 10 you have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him so where is the change which has come in us many of us want some change oh should i wear white and white or should i uh, shave in a particular way should i wear a cross should i do this should i do that many of us we focus on the outside how we can change our appearance ha huh? everybody will wear ordinary collar this fellow will wear a white collar somebody gave me white collar also see i'll tell you something it is not in anything outside your new man is in your knowledge you renewed in your knowledge that is new man we need to walk in renewal of knowledge your knowledge need to be renewed every day every day you need to know something of god that's what it says put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who is created in him i think somebody is not excited about what i am talking about i will tell you what you will like god is going to bring a new beginning in your finance have you seen everybody uh, कितना खुश आई नो इट आई नो इट बिकॉज वेन आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट न्यू बिगिनिंग न्यू बिगिनिंग स्पिरिचुअल यू थॉट क्या स्पिरिचुअल ए मनी इज द मोस्ट स्पिरिचुअल थिंग हाँ मनी इज आई टेल यू समथिंग मनी इज द मोस्ट स्पिरिचुअल थिंग अंडरस्टैंड दिस that's why there is so much confusion in money sex is the next most spiritual thing that's why so much confusion is there third most spiritual thing is power that's why i, I wrote a book money sex power <laughs> really nobody knows how to handle power nobody knows they they just cross a power very fast without knowing go to any office they don't they don't they cross the power they will talk against the boss finished you will never prosper no matter who your boss is that's why you know these three things are very important why solomon wrote three things three topics on for the young people he wrote three books one book is for youth 
one book is for the old one book is for the lovers three book he wrote huh very important so i termed the book of proverbs as money sex and power because this is a very very important thing money is a very spiritual thing when i say god is going to bring a new beginning i am telling you god is going to bring a new beginning in your finance okay tell your neighbor god is going to change the way you live new friends mean huh? new beginning means new beginning in your finance god wants to bring a new beginning in your finance i'll tell you one thing if you really want to have more finance in your life to be blessed in financial area the only thing you need to do is you need to give away what you are holding on some people are earning lot of money and putting in a bottle huh and preserving the bottle they putting the bottle under their shirt very careful i'll tell you something the more you are hugging your finance you are telling god thank you god ha huh? enough god i'll tell you you are not be- if you really believe in the new new beginning in your finance you should release what you are holding on to don't be emotional about it you just pray about it discuss if you are married discuss with your wife you release what you have to release many of us because we have not released we have not gone into the next level of our finance your finance is given to you to bless somebody you need to release it god is going to bring a new beginning in your finance huh? all new beginning starts with new birth it just goes huh, into your finance your new birth will also bring a new huh? new beginning sometimes i people ask me pastor how to bring a new beginning like tell, i'll tell you something how to bring a new how to usher a new beginning bible says a new born baby a new born baby what it does a new born baby all the time is drinking milk if you are a father or a mother you sh- you will know it first hand 24 hours it is just drinking milk now for a child of god for for a new creation the only alternative is the word of god let's turn to 1 peter chapter 2 verse 2 we have to devour eat the word as a newborn baby drinks milk as newborn babies desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby eat to assure the new beginning in my life i need to take my bible i need to read it like how your your baby drinks milk that is how we we assure the new beginning that's how we grow that's how we cooperate with god as you read the bible as you read the word of god it is not an ordinary book it's not an ordinary book sooner or later it will talk to you sooner or later it will give you the solution of your life for example i'll tell you something there are times in my life i don't know what to do i just don't know what to do what to do with my life what to do with my family what to do with this issue what to do with this problem i don't know so what i do is i just take my bible i just keep reading 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 i don't i forget my problem then i started to become observed in the word of god as i am observed in the word of god suddenly god gives me an answer some word just pops out and just pronounces my answer in front of me i say this is the word that's how many of my impossible situations have been made into possibilities it just jumps out of the bible and you say hey, here is the answer here is the answer that is how god talks to you many of us we don't we 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 want the new new life we want the new creation we want the new beginning how to how to start a new beginning every new beginning begins with the revelation 
with with the knowledge with the word with an information every new beginning you are fed up of your life you need a new beginning and god wants to bring a new beginning you have to provoke the new beginning to begin in your life it always starts one day god told abraham you'll get out of this place how old was he he was 75 years old i'll tell you there is no age for a new beginning you may be young old very old 75 how many 75 plus you can have a new beginning anyone can have a new be- there is no age for new beginning everybody can have a new beginning abraham had a new beginning god one day told him get out of your father's house huh what is this let's turn to genesis 12 genesis 12 1 now the lord had said to abram get out of your country from your family from your father's house the moment god said those things to him now he got that strength what happened verse 4 so abraham departed as the lord had spoken to him what gave him that strength 75 years that means he was living in a community where his relatives his brothers his uh, uncles and aunts and the relatives and everyone was living with him god told him get out of your family of your country family father's house he got that strength for a new beginning i tell you this was the beginning of the journey of abraham the moment god he obeyed the first point he, it was easy for him to obey the second point third point huh? and it's a journey of faith i'll tell you something it always begins when the word of god comes to you many of us we need the word of god from us we need a fresh revelation of the word how it comes it comes when you when you are indulging yourself in the word of god it comes to you it comes to you one day i was in a in a problem of my house i was reading the word god gave me an answer in the in the word only god said i will take you to these places right finished one day i was so confused about my future i was reading the bible god spoke to me this is how your future is confusion gone one day i failed many times i was reading the bible god said i will pass you he passed me what is your problem where you are stuck where is your new beginning you assure the new beginning in your life by provoking by cooperating very important you need to provoke the new beginning in your life so that it will start see some people now they have a revelation only when bad things occur to them they won't, they won't listen when everything is okay there was a two boys for a wealthy father one fellow said mera hisab karo mai jayega so he went he went far away did all the wrong things and he landed up in a pig sty and he wanted to eat what the pigs were eating let's turn to huh let us see one wonderful new beginning luke chapter 15 15 this boy went and joined himself to a citizen of that country he sent them into the fields to feed swine he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate and no one gave him anything but when he came to himself he said how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough he went back to his father when it happened it happened in a wrong place in a dirty place i'll tell you sometimes when we when we walk in our own ideas and ideologies and friends and wrong things we may end up even like this guy but god will not leave us even in that place he got a revelation of god hey my father's house what a truth it is bad place but a good word 
Sometimes, you know, you need not go to till that point. You can turn today. You can rectify today, realign yourself today. So that you can have a revelation today. When you have a revelation, see new beginning always begins with new birth. It always starts with new word, a new knowledge you have of God. It always starts with new finances. New finance. New finances will always begin in your life when you start to give. The moment you release money huh, to the place where God wants you to sow, new beginning will come. That's why when Pastor Joseph said, I am coming to your fellowship, I came with a check. I sowed into his life. Because I know this will be a time where God will release the finance. So I don't want to miss it. I came clearly prepared. I tell you, each one of you need to be smart spiritually. Huh? We should be smart so that we can have new beginnings in our life. God is a good God. The moment you obey, you actually provoke that new beginning in your life. Yes, God is going to do new things. New, I tell you, New beginning comes when God gives you a new vision. There was a time I was talking to Pastor Joseph this uh, Sunday. You know, he was telling, you know, there was a time where the church was just going down and down and down. And I was so desperate. At that time, I started to fast. I was staying in a place. I was fasting. When I was fasting, God gave me a vision. This was somewhere in 1980. God told certain things to me. After that vision, New Life Fellowship spread all over the world. Till then it was just one church. Somewhere in South Bombay. After God spoke to me in those days, it became an international movement. Today New Life Fellowship Church is in many countries. It started because of a vision. A new beginning always starts with the word of God. Or a word of a vision. A vision. That's why I'll tell you, sometimes you need, you need to change your friendship. Many times the ruin of us is having people, you know, in our wagon who will never allow you to. Oh, I'll tell you, there are many people like that in the world. Even in churches, many believers are like that. They will never go anywhere. They will not allow you to. They will put some character. I'll tell you, you need to have new conversation. You need to join with the right guys who are growing. You should be very careful about this. You should have the right friends. You need to change your friends. Some of you need to change your friendship. Bible says, you know, blessed is the man. Let's turn to Psalm 1. Why it is first? Why it is Psalm 1? It is the first Psalm. It starts with this. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of ungodly. Why? Ungodly people will counsel you. You are finished. They will see that you are... You are Swimming in the gutter. You may be saying, ha, ah, I'm swimming very nice. It's the wrong place. They won't allow you. First, we have to change your friendship. Many of our young people, young people are very friendly. I know young people, very friendly, very friendly, very good. Friendly nature is a good nature. But you need to use it wisely. Correct, no? Uh, marriage is a good thing, but you need to be very wise when you marry. Everything is good only. But you need to be more wise when you do it, when you exhibit, when you ex express it. Whom you are fellowshipping with? Whom you are talking with? It says, you know, very clearly, you know, you will not walk with the ungodly. Huh? You will not stand in the path of sin sinners. You will not even stand there. Bible is not talking whether I can go or not. You don't stand there first. First vacate the place. It says, you know, don't sit in the seat of the scornful. Scorn, oh, is a scornful. Disrespectful of authorities. This is scornful. 
anywhere you go disrespectful of authorities if any families have ruined because they have disrespected the authorities yes many many people have got ruined because scornful you will not even go and sit them why this says like that why david is saying my my child don't go and sit with a scornful because david knows he has come up the hard way a shepherd boy became a king ruled israel for so many years his own boss was against him to kill him ask david he will tell you don't sit with the scornful they will teach you how to scorn authorities they will teach you bad things one bad word i tell you one bad word about anything wrong it will it will disrupt your future for 3 years never allow bad things to happen in your life never allow bad words to happen in your life especially these people you keep them away why you want to suffer in life unnecessary suffering devil wants us to suffer you know especially devil attacks the believers believers uska kya len dene unbeliever he will give them lot of money to go and spoil the world but a child of god when you washed by the blood of jesus christ when you when i pronounce every sunday morning a word of god on you i put the word of god jesus on your on your forehead he will see you when you go home he will attack you he will come and disturb your spiritual walk if this is a new new time i i i with all my heart i feel that this god is doing something new in my life in your life in the life of house of prayer